Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, with me are my esteemed colleagues. Dave. Nate. And uh, today we're going to talk terrible terrain. Uh, I'm talking about landscape influenced by orcs and goblinoids. Because they're pretty Basically, much the same. I, I want to go with monstrous humanoids. And uh, thank you, uh, Moon Cleric, for the suggestion. And uh, so, yeah, so they asked about hobgoblins, goblins, and orcs specifically. But I'm just going to lump that all together with basically monstrous humanoids because most of them kind of interact the same with, with the landscape. Absolutely. Especially orcs and the goblinoids. Right. You know, gnolls are probably the same you know, same way. Ogres. You know, giants are more sophisticated, so right. yeah, that'd be a little different. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. But giants aren't monstrous humanoids. They're giants. That's true. Which that is, is why true. they're not being talked about. Although, <laughs> an ogre is a giant as well, but it would act more yeah. like a monstrous humanoid. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So. So, all right. So, basically, you know, monstrous humanoids are going to just pretty much tear apart the landscape. That aren't sylvan creatures. So. There, there's our, there's our disclaimer. Okay. <laughs> Aren't they just fake? So orcs, <laughs> goblins, goblinoids, hobgoblins. So they're, they're going to tear apart the landscape. They're going to basically extract everything that they feel that they could possibly use, and you know, move on to pillaging another area. They're like locusts. <laughs> yeah, they're, you know, they're going to take what's easy to do to get at first. Then maybe, maybe the, the then they start bringing in the slaves if they don't have them already oh. to get at the stuff that's more difficult. You know, a lot of times these, you know, these they're they're more primitive. They're not as uh, advanced when it comes to civilization. So yeah, they kind of move on to to new hunt. They hunt it. They hunt an area until there's nothing left to hunt. There's no more places to raid or pillage, and they kind of move on to the next. They're one. not they're not going to set up shop and and open up mines looking for you know jewels, precious metals, and the and the whole nine. Uh, but you know they they will whatever is kind of on the surface. You know they will they will use and abuse. Well, that's true. Although uh, previous editions did talk about orcs being accomplished smiths, so so it it depends too. Like there's definitely room for variance, but I, I even think you know those, I, I still see them being the kind of the same way where they're going to take from the land until there's nothing left to take. But this could be several years. So let's think let's 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 think about what that would look like over the course of the five years it takes them to totally rape the land and and totally leave it, you know. A wasteland. Well, right, right at onset, um, you know the 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 herds in the area are going to have diminished capacity because they're going to overhunt um, anything that's you know small and and burnable is going to be quickly quickly removed so that they can use the, use their fires because a lot of them keep a fire going all all the time, um, you know, and anything of immediate value. And they're going to clear the land as fast as and, and right. easily as they can. So, right. yeah, they're totally going to slash and burn the shit out of that right. thing. You know, they're going to, you know, they're going to cut, they're going to, they're going to deforest and cut the trees. They're not going to care about, you know, if it's going to come back or not. They just know right. they need to build their lodges now. Right. So, and then, of course, you know, whatever's the closest village is going to be attacked. Yeah, so yeah, and they're just gonna they'd probably stay in an area until it's hunted out. They can't they 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 have to range too far for not only game but also for victims. Mm -hmm. You know, really like when I think of orcs and goblins, if they've been in an area for a while, and it must have started really out really verdant beforehand. I think of Morador, yeah, for <laughs> from Lord of the Rings. You know, smoke is billowing and billowing out. You know, maybe there's ash everywhere. I don't even know how it got there. <laughs> well, from all those fresh green trees they were burning. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, the the, the landscape is going to become very desolate. Absolutely. Now, I mean, now that you could have other variants, you know, you could have. You know, certain monstrous races that actually live with the land better or more intelligent. Like more or shamanic orcs, like if they have some kind of religious leaders that are leading them more towards like, uh, like some kind of life cycle with their with the world around them, rather than, you know. And you just can you can still have chop and burn. You can still have, you know, these monstrous humanoids in your world be you know living off the land, and still be evil. You know, there's nothing to stop them from saying, you know what. I, I have no problem killing people. I just am not going to abuse the landscape. That's where these people are. Well, yeah, well, that, there's you know self-sustaining, you know, concepts that go with that as well. But you know, so so I guess there's like different variants you could do. 
you could definitely do the total. We're gonna every we're gonna turn this land into like in hob in hob in uh habitable when we leave. You know that level of malevolence and evil and just not caring. Mm-hmm. You know. Or you could go the other route where it's like, yeah, we're cool with everything around us, you know. We just don't like people and we eat them and stuff. Yeah, no problem with killing a, a group of villagers if you feel like it. But, you know, you still have to go home and who wants to sleep on crap, you know? <laughs> kind of like that idea, that mentality. So kind of like a little bit of elevated above, you know, just uh, semi-intelligent monsters. Yeah, or you know, or you perhaps you have the evil necromancer that is building his army, and he's using monstrous humanoids, and maybe like they would respect the land in, in a sense, but he doesn't give a crap. Uh-huh. You know, he wants to burn the world, and this is his army to do it. So he doesn't let them leave. You know, they they're forced to stay in one area, and, and totally, and and it's you know not only is he being despoiled from the you know all these monstrous humanoids running around doing their thing, but you know from whatever the necromancer is doing too, it could be like tainting the land almost like a dark sun style. Yeah, and if you have a roving band of several hundred orcs and goblins and hobgoblins, that's going to just mess up the land just because. I mean trampling far, farmland and you know cut, boots cutting down trees for firewood just for the camps every night you're gonna leave a path of just well that's the place. other thing you know if, you know there's like the smaller groups in themselves aren't really a problem like the the wilderness will kind of recover it's when you get a powerful warlord or force that unites them together and now all of a sudden you know there's so many more mouths to feed so much more more that has to be sustained from the land around mm-hmm. it and yeah, you know, that's when the impact is really going to start to start to get uh, felt. Yeah, absolutely. Armies over hunting, then there's no food to hunt, so they start attacking farms, and it can be a really big hassle to get rid of our or- army. Yeah, so so there's like a couple ways of looking at this, right? So we got all right, you know, a big bad summons them all together. You know, depending on how long are there, that's you know, an encamped army. Is going to be devastating. Oh, absolutely! And it, it doesn't actually matter, you know, what the race is it could at be that point. Aristocratic humans, and right. camped armies. Going Unless to they're that elves, that place is so boned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, elves, el- elf pee probably makes trees grow more or something. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's straight fertilizer. <laughs> yeah, better than bone meal. But you know, so or, then you, you know, and then you have you know, or you have the small, you know, tribal organizations where maybe it's only fifteen to thirty members, mm-hmm. you know. Several families is probably not going to impact land that much. One of the no, other not things, right at first, yeah, and it'll be harder to find a small tribe. It'll be harder to. They might even be using some methods of. Uh, I feel like hobgoblins and goblins would be better at hiding themselves somewhere. Um, Absolutely. You know, strategic cut down trees for the opening or some kind of. Well, well, here's the thing. All right, so I think bugbears and goblins would probably live with nature a little bit better in the sense that one mm. because they're lazier so they're less inclined to, to the hobgoblins change are mil- things. militaristic yeah they're going to change they're going to change the area around them a lot that's true and, and camp in i think more civilized orcs are going to kind of do the same it's almost like with with the monstrous humanoids the more the more bestial more monstrous they are the the less the impact because they really are just hunter gatherers mm-hmm. and the, you know the fact that there's not as many of them you know they're probably going to just follow game, so they're not going to leave as much of a disturbance behind them. But it's when you get to, when you get that that pseudo civilization of, you know, we're going to make this area our home and our kingdom or or whatever whatever they're calling it, and they 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 decide they're not going to leave. Then that's when they're going to really they're going to deforest everything. You know, they're if there's anything precious in the ground, they're going to strip it out. If if there's any kind of animals. They're going to hunt them to extinction, you know, and drive them from the area to the point where they are going to have to start capturing livestock and keeping livestock. You know, the other problem is they're not agriculturally. These are not races that are out there planting right. and harvesting. You know, if they are, they're probably they have slaves to do it for them. They're not doing it. Mm-hmm. Or they might be trying to take your harvest. Well, exactly. You know, and even if they have slaves doing it, you know, chances are slaves don't tend to work that well. You know, so they're not going to be planting it very well or efficient. And you know, the, the the race that's controlling them probably doesn't have the skill to know how efficient it's being done. Exactly. Or they should capture some farmers. 
<laughs> yes, but <laughs> no, the, he's saying, but the farmers aren't going to want to work for the people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the hobgoblin yeah. that's forcing them to work doesn't know when he's working, you know, to a maximum efficiency. Oh, yeah. yeah he doesn't like, know when you you're doing it right. You could have planted another acre today, you know, like they're yeah. like, oh, what's an acre? <laughs> how does he know that them, them, you know, sticking a seed in a hole and putting a rock over top of it isn't the way to do it? So, yeah, so I don't know. Anything stand out for you guys that you want to throw out there? I really like the idea of for the terrain for goblins, the idea of them having little hidey holes and places that the humans can't. They're kind of got that cobalt feel to them where like they could be there one instant shooting at you with or throwing rocks at you and then they, they hop in a stump that actually has a little burrow that goes into some other cavern yeah, or I, channel for their for their lair you know, per, so they can start this so they can start harassing you long before you even get to their what their encampment would be like goblins I see is you know kind of somewhat pseudo subterranean they might have you know some stuff on the surface but whatever's up there is probably only a portion of the of, of what they have there's probably more more things burrows. underground yeah burrows i mean it's, they're not they're not digging in the in the hard rock but they're, they're moving through you know hard hard soil so that they've got their numbers concealed um and and things on the surface absolutely ramshackle thrown together without a care in the world hobgoblins i'm i'm seeing you know you know squat sturdy structures th things that you know, look almost uniform to, to some some degree. Um, bugbears, I see as a kind of mixture because bugbears are kind of the the top of the you know goblinoid hierarchy. So they're going to have hobgoblins and goblins kind of in tow that are are slaves or just moving along with the pack because of the superiority. Um, orcs, I see as Similar to hobgoblins in, in you know squat structures, but it's it's there's not going to be any uniformity. They're going to use whatever they can thrown together, and um, you know almost to to the point of like ugly asymmetrical you know situations. That's just my take. I see you know see I I see you know I actually put hobgoblins above bugbears. You know the bugbears are physically superior, but. You know, they're intellectually inferior to a hobgoblin, you know, and they're not, you know, they, they don't have, the, they're not driven and they're not as disciplined as the hobgoblin. That's true. You know, you know now definitely a bugbear could, you know, find himself bullying a group of hobgoblins, or especially goblins. But I, I kind of see them actually, be, of the three, being like worse off like because they're i think they're i feel like they're lazier than the goblins because they're used to use they're used to being able to push people around to do what they want and not as disciplined as the hobgoblins it, you know so i could definitely see them kind of lazing around hanging out in trees and uh you know almost uh like a like a vagabond kind of lifestyle <laughs> unless they have you know people to bully around to kind of get the better things from life right um i Totally agree with your assessment of the goblins. I can't even see them actually have taken over a halfling or uh, or or gnome settlements mm -hmm. and driven them out. And and you know and then, of course taking what was nice and turning it basically into crap. <laughs> uh, the hobgoblins are going to improve upon anything they get their hands on. I agree. They're going to make it better. Uh, it, you know if they have bugbears and goblins to work with, they're going to get the most out of them. It may be at the end of a lash, but they're going to they're, they're going to make something happen. I think. Uh, orcs, orcs to me feel like they kind of run the gambit, where, uh, where I kind of feel like bugbears, hobgoblins, and goblins are kind of like pigeonholed, where orcs can be anything from the the primitive shamanistic lifestyle, of, of almost like Native Americans, up to you know the hobgoblin standard and anywhere in between. So it's kind of going to depend upon what you have as their you know pseudo leader or warlord, you know. However, that that person's going to act. And, you know, he's going to command his followers to, you know, do the same. If you've got a thug, your guys are going to be lazy, you know, you know, lay about thugs. But if you've got a, a bona fide warlord, it's going to be like, you know, hard precision military. Yeah, yeah. or some like Grumpsh inspired uh, orc right. cleric or something. But, or, you know, even like, you know, you have the orcs in um, like the World of Warcraft. Is a good example, and also yeah. the goblins in World of Warcraft. Warcraft, like there's so there's other places you can draw inspiration from. Absolutely, and, and like I kind of like 
Like for goblins, I love the Warcraft world of Warcraft goblins. They're kind of nuts and you know they're alchemists and they blow stuff up. <laughs> that would be a completely different environment. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if you yeah. gave goblins a bit more intellect and made them feel a little more gnomy, I think. Uh, you pretty much have. Well, that's it. You, you know, when, when a daddy tinker gnome and a mommy goblin come together, <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's what you get, a world, world of Warcraft goblins. Uh, indeed, pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I think we rove the range on this one. Yeah, I think so. So, uh, if you if you have uh, any differences of opinion or want to share your, your own uh, ideas, put them in the comments below. While you're doing that, click like, share, subscribe. You can check us out over on nerdarchy.com. You can also check us out on Facebook. So until next time, stay stay nerdy. nerdy.